Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. Now I got the wine. All right, so if you watched last week, you saw that, did the whole introduction, started talking about the wine, showed you the label, and voila, it was the wrong wine. All right, so, this is the 2001 Chateau Lavio Cure, or Cure. There's a little little thing at the end of the E, so I, I doubt it's Cure, maybe it's Cure. Ceci, help me out. Um, from Fransac. 2001. Now this wine, um, again to repeat myself, was one of the wines that was suggested for me for Cabernet Day. Now that was great and all except for the fact that this wine is a Merlot based wine. Eh, not a Cabernet based wine. It's Cabernet Sauvignon in it. Uh, actually there's Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon and even those combined are only 26% of the wine. It is 74% uh, Merlot, and then 22% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, I'm sorry, 22% Cabernet Franc, and 4% Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, I paid $32.29 for this, so pretty pricey wine. Um, it's gotten good reviews. It is from the Fronsac area of Bordeaux. Now that is the uh, right bank, the eastern part, uh, the right bank of Bordeaux. Fransac is just north of Libourne. Uh, Libourne is where um, if you go kind of east and south, you get saint Emilion, And if you go north and east, you get Pomerol. All right. And so Fransac is actually right on, right on the river. Um, the Giron. All right. So um, it's been around for quite some time. I thought I was going to have... Now, th it's currently owned, well, according to the website, I don't know how old the information is, currently owned by some Americans. Um, they wanted to, uh, uh, Bordeaux lovers who recognize the exceptional potential of the estate. They bought it in 1986. Um, it looks like it was, cr it was uh, founded in 1780, with uh, originally was 20 hectares in a single plot. Um, Let's see, what else? What else? Was there anything else? Nothing. It was just kind of typical marketing fluff, just trying to say, hey, they, they uh, are really trying to, you know, um, market the wine. It says that some of the wines, uh, some of the vines um, go back to 75 years. Um, like I said, Viel is old in French, so the old cure, I mean, when I did Google Translate, it said the old cure. So um, not sure if... This was considered a cure for something. I mean, alcohol has been considered, has been considered tonics for various ailments. So, um, I mean, tonic water is, the quinine was meant to be to cure your ails. So, um, so I'm not really sure. Uh, other than that, um, like I said, it's 2001. So we got some age on this. The, uh, this, I guess, this one wasn't too bad. Now, I thought I saw something. Maybe it's this one. Yeah, it was that one. But I thought there was something on the uh, on the cork that this, that concerned me, but I guess not. All right, let's get right, let's get right into it. Well, first of all, just real quick on, on the color. This is a, you know, this is a 13-year-old wine, okay? If I was just looking at the color, it, it definitely is, is getting browner. Okay, the color alone would tell me I'm drinking something that's at least, at, at least five, six, seven years old, probably older, which this is. I mean, I probably wouldn't on the color think this is a one to three year old wine. I probably would be, be very suspect if someone told me this was five to seven years uh, or four to seven years. Um, so on the color alone, it's got a bit of, you know, it's, it's 
they hate to use the word brick red, but that darker red that you associate with brick, but you know, has a little brown to it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it is uh, uh, almost orange too. Now, granted these LEDs might be, uh, might not be the best. Uh, I also might be picking up some of the red on here, but I mean, it is definitely an aged wine just on the color alone. Not the cologne, color alone. Um, as red wine ages, it turns more brown. And so does white wine. It's kind of funny how that happens. So, I mean, I get lots of dust. I mean, I get like almost Italian, you know, like, the, like I would almost think this is an Italian wine on the nose, or at least think it might be Italian. It has that leather and dust uh, to it. Not the musty that I got last week in, in the Montes. This is, you know, the good type of dusty, musty almost type of stuff. Like you're down in the basement. Yeah, I mean, the nose is phenomenal. At least I, something that I like. I mean, you may not like this type of nose. You might be like, ugh. Okay, but I like it. Now, as far as fruits, we don't get any fruit. Maybe it's like dead flower. Dead flowers, I mean... In general, I mean, I don't know what dead rose petals or decayed rose petals uh, taste, smell like, but there is a decay to it. So yeah, you know, like uh, whether it's leaves or, or petals, you know, flower petals, there is a, you know, there is that type of, uh, again, in a good way, nothing, nothing big, just a little bit subtle. I mean, I'm excited about trying this wine. Initial taste, pretty good. But let's get another taste in here. So initially, I got I got that earthiness out of it, you know, dusty and all that. But on the back palate. I got almost like this caramel quality to it. Um, and there's a little bit of red fruit. Um, I wouldn't say like caramel apple, like red apple, but almost like that. You know, there's, there's also a fuzziness to the tannins, like, you know, like, 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 you know, the skin, like you're actually tasting the skin of, of an apple or of a grape, I guess. Um, but it has that consistency of an apple skin. Um, there was a hint of caramel, not, not really there for very long. Um, I can kind of feel the alcohol. I can't believe this is going to be very, very high in alcohol. It's only 13%. I mean, it's not like it feels like it's hot, but I could feel a little alcohol on it um, in the lungs, you know, breathing out. Um, yeah, it really does. It almost feels like I bit into an apple like a red apple. And there's an oxidative quality, like, you know, the, the apple browned a little bit. So you get that, you get that, um, um, you get that quality. And I'm not used to calling red apple on, on, you know, Merlot or Cabernet, you know, wines. But yeah, real subtle. I think it's more the texture, more the feel, not necessarily the flavor. The earthiness out of it, the red fruits, the dark, uh, not dark red fruits, not like, you know, like dark cherries and what that, but almost kind of bright. Um, maybe like a cranberry, but, you know, like sour, not sour cherry, um, you know, like, like, you know, like a cranberry and really kind of red apple, red delicious. Um, that is, again, the hint of caramel, um, the mussiness, the, the dust again from that. Um, floral, nah, I guess not, not really. Um, the tannin feels like it's a little bit, it got a little bit higher just now, uh, on my gums, but I would say this is probably a medium tannin wine, um, acidity, medium plus, 
Um, I think this is a really excellent wine. Um, if you can find this wine, um, definitely do. I said it was Specs I bought this at, right? Um, so at least in the Texas area, if you can find it. I said 2001, it's definitely got some age. Um, it's, it's, it's still tasting pretty good. Let's put it this way. If, if, if I completely was blind, like I didn't, hadn't seen the wine, I just tasted it, okay? I wouldn't think this was a 13-year-old wine, okay? I mean, I would, I would probably still peg it as maybe a little older. I might put it in that, that four to seven year range, but definitely wouldn't say this is, you know, 14, 13 years old. It's a good wine. If you find it, buy it. Absolutely. Especially at 2001. Uh, the other ones, don't know. But uh, I'm excited about having more of this later. Um, all right, so that's going to wrap it up uh, for this episode. Again, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. Um, just also, real quick, the, the amount of views I've been getting ever since I've switched over to hosting the videos on my site and using Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y, using them for the podcast part of things has just been phenomenal. The amount of views that have been happening through podcatchers and through however they do it has just been... I. I I, I wish I'd done this as soon as I moved over to Pressable. I wish I had done this back then and worked with Blueberry because, I mean, I never got these kinds of numbers from Blip, ever. Um, so, I mean, I still send my stuff to Blip because they're, they're still sent to other things and that's how I get to YouTube. Uh, matter of fact, I don't get a lot of views on YouTube. I had someone, at, someone ask me, I said, YouTube is nothing to me. I have my stuff on YouTube because it's expected. Be, trust me, the amount of views I got on YouTube pale in comparison to anywhere else but that's okay i go where the views are anyway find me on tivo find me on roku through ifood.tv's app uh find me your favorite podcatcher. find me on youtube um find me all over all over the internet uh click the link below to find more about the wine um hit the donate button over here so i can buy some more wine um from me up up here and we'll see everyone again next time.